Hi, I'm Lexi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the clothes that I own that I really like and I keep around, but I don't wear. Um, this is for a lot of different reasons, as I figured out when I started looking at each item um, individually and so I want to avoid that mistake in the future and also just clear out the stuff that it's never gonna happen for. I also want to say uh, right up front that I'm gonna be talking about weight gain and weight loss not so much as to like in the particulars of it but um, just in how it uh, pertains to my clothing fitting or not fitting and so if that's something that's like triggering for you or you don't want to hear about um, just I just want to warn you about that another thing I want to say before I get started is that um, so there's going to be like takeaways from today's video and if you watched my video about analyzing my Pinterest fashion inspiration you'll know that um, I also had takeaways from that video and so there are going to be a lot of videos where there are like takeaways and like just you know there there's going to be a point at which I put those takeaways together I I'm planning on building like a big like a wardrobe chart um, with pictures of individual items and like um, you can so you can see like the spectrum of my clothes and how things fit. Um, I think I'll probably start building that after I um, finish my declutter. So analyzing these clothes that are in the category two from my declutter, the clothes I like and don't wear, and then also my category three clothes from the declutter, clothes that I wear even though I don't really like them. So once that's done, I'm gonna be start, uh, starting on building this like wardrobe sort of like flow chart or, you know, organizational thing. Um, and so that, that that is coming. It's not just gonna be endless videos on mm, takeaways. So just FYI. Okay, well, let's get started. The first overarching category are things that don't fit. And then from there, I've kind of subdivided them. There is the first category with things that don't fit and will never fit. Um, or they fit and they're just something about the fit is so bad that I don't wear them and it's not anything that can be fixed. That includes three pairs of shoes. These are horribly uncomfortable. Horribly uncomfortable. And these are also horribly uncomfortable. You wouldn't think that, but I got them used and uh, the previous owner's like foot imprints are so worn into the sole that my feet don't line up with them and they like, they don't, it hurts, it's uncomfortable. So also getting rid of that. And then I have this tank top. So this tank top uh, fits, but it's made in uh, Japan. And so even though they put shirring on the back so that technically it can fit my size, it's just made for a smaller frame. And these straps in the front are like weirdly too far together. And it just it's just the whole like, cut of the bodice is for someone with a smaller frame than me. And so constantly like fidgeting with it. So that's not gonna change. And then the last thing is a shirt. Now this is, uh, I love this shirt. I almost put this in another category coming up that's like sentimental items, but I love this shirt. I love the band. I got this at one of the band's shows, but I don't wear it because um, my bust, even though this is the size that fits me, my bust uh, stretches it and it stretches the glitter material and it's so like it, it like it's almost like cracked and it, and it just looks very stretched in the bust, even though the fabric itself is not very stretched. And I don't like the way that fits, and that's never going to change. So that's another item that can be gotten rid of. Um, another one is uh, this I this vest, which is just way too small. This is not like I'm going to be able to fit this if I lose 10 pounds. This is just I did all this work on it for this time in my life when I was very small, and I. To be honest, I doubt that I'll ever get that size again, but this vest is cool enough and I like it enough as like, um, just like sentimental and just, I've put a lot of work into it. So this is something I'm probably gonna hold on to for, I don't know, future generations, my kids, or just as a cool keepsake. The next subcategory is things that don't fit me right but can be fixed. And there are two items in that category. The first is this polka dot top. Um, and actually I've already fixed it. So the sleeves were too long and they always fell down. So I've just kind of sewed them, <laughs> made them shorter. And there you go. So this is gonna go back in my closet. The next item I have not fixed yet, but I'm going to this afternoon, um, is this cool uh, 
what's this called? Fishnet undershirt. And I love it, but it's actually a bodysuit. And the bodysuit bottom is really uncomfortable. It gives me a wedgie. So I'm just going to cut it off and wear this like a normal shirt. If it ends up being something where as a normal shirt, it doesn't fit right, it like rides up and it needed to have been pulled down, then I can throw it away. But it's not like this was something that could be uh, really sold as it's like not super hygienic to resell something like that. So uh, I'm gonna be fixing that this afternoon and hopefully I can put it back in my closet. The last category is things that don't fit me now, but I think there's a reasonable expectation that they can fit in the future. Now I am someone who, um, I fluctuate sizes a lot. So I go, I, I've been, I've been everywhere from a size four to a size 16, almost maybe 18, and like couldn't find clothes in the mall stores. Um, I don't think that I'll be at those extremes because again, most of the my life I've um, been pretty stable. Uh, but I do, even in that stable range, I change sizes a lot. So I go from in a 20 pound range that I bounce around in depending on how much time I have in my life to cook for myself and um, you know just be a healthier person or how busy and stressed I am and eating takeout. But in that 20 pound in that 20 pounds, I change like six sizes. I go from a size six to a size 12. So I have a lot of things in my closet that are at that smaller end. Right now I'm like in the middle, but um, I do have some items in my closet that are at the smaller end. They're not like, I'm never gonna be that skinny again. Like if I lost five pounds, I could probably fit these things. So I think that for me, they're worth keeping around, but I'm going to make sure that they're like in the back of the closet or Actually, I'm going to put them in a shoebox and put them in the closet, but not like in the deep depths of the closet, uh, like my uh, other vest, but um, maybe I'll pull them out again if I lose five pounds. So kind of not up in the front where I have to look at them every day and they sort of clutter up my view of my clothes, but I'm not going to get rid of them because there's a good chance they will fit again. So that includes this jean vest with this, uh, I hand sewed in this velvet here and put on these patches on the back and I really like that. Um, there are these uh, vintage Wrangler shorts that I studded up. There are this other pair of vintage Wrangler shorts that I've never actually worn. Uh, they still have the original Wrangler tag on them. I, don't know exactly when they're from, but they're pretty, they still have the vintage store tag on them too. Uh, so hopefully, like they almost fit. Um, let me see. Oh, this beautiful dress here. It's in like a vintage style. So I know that it's not something that even if I didn't fit into it until next year that I would think is out of fashion. This is something that I think will always be in fashion and I love it. This is something I've actually owned in multiple sizes, but I finally just bought a medium that I knew I could wear when I was kind of like in my normal day. I had it in on an extra large when I was like a size 16 and I had it in a size small when I was like a size four and now it's in a size medium. So it kind of fits, but um, it just, I think if I was a little smaller, it would fit better. So I'm going to uh, keep that around in case I get a little smaller. Um, the next item is this blazer. It's too small, so I don't wear it. It actually still kind of fits me, um, but it's just like not comfortable to wear, as it, not as comfortable to wear as it could be um, in the arms. But I do wear it occasionally, but I think I would wear it a lot more if I was uh, a little smaller. But actually, you know, maybe I should just keep this on for the video, guys. I kind of like it. Okay, that's it. I'm keeping it on. And the last item is a pair of jeans. These are really cool. They have um, this cool lace-up detail and they're just about a size too small for me right now. So I'm going to be keeping these items kind of in the back of the closet. Maybe this blazer a little, a little further towards the front of the closet, but definitely not in the front where I wear my clothes that fit me all the time. The next category is clothes that I have for, I guess you could say sentimental reasons that I like the garment, but I don't like, I guess I just don't like wearing it. So um, the first is my, I guess you could call it my battle vest, my studded leather vest. I don't like wearing this because it's pretty big on me and not flattering. It was weirdly stiff 
uh, after I cut the sleeves off this jacket and it was like weirdly stiff so I washed it and now it just sort of hangs um but I don't to be honest I really don't see myself wearing this again in the future I am going to keep this um for sentimental reasons in like a keepsake box and that's going to be a theme things that I don't want to wear anymore and I don't ever see myself wearing but I've customized I'm generally going to keep them because like why not I like it and I don't like the idea of just getting rid of everything that you're not going to use again I I do like keeping some things for sentimental reasons and looking at them occasionally so that's what I'm going to do with this vest the next item is this leather fry purse um this purse is still in um good condition this the leather is like really worked in and used, which I know that some people like. They like buying leather things that have um, really been broken in. I've kept this because this was the first purse I ever had and my mom got it for me. I think I was like, I don't know, 19 or something and she got it for me as a gift and I wore this as my only purse for years and uh, I think I'm ready to part with it. I don't see myself ever wearing it again. It's not my style to have this sort of... Um, crossbody satchel. I learned that I really don't like crossbody straps and crossbody bags. So I'm going to try to find this a new home and, and uh, I'm going to get rid of this. The next item is this t-shirt, uh, friends band. Uh, it's huge on me. They only had it for sale in one size. They only made like extra, extra large. It's not flattering on me. I often would wear it in the summer and just tie it up in the corner, but I would just rather wear something that fits. This I'm gonna keep in my keepsake box. The next item is this t-shirt with my fiance on it. Uh, I don't wear this because I don't like the fit. It was made in a really long style and that's just not my style of t-shirt. It's so long that when I tuck it in, it goes down past my butt and then it like leaves like a line and it just, it doesn't fit. Um, I'm also going to keep this in a keepsake box. The next item is this. I've kept it around because it was so cool and it reminded me of an era in my life when I wore it, but uh, I don't need to keep this and I can find this a, uh, a new home. I don't think I'm ever going to be wearing this again. And now I've got another Friends Band shirt. Um, to be honest, I've never worn this because it's the second of two oversized blue shirts and my other one I've just been wearing for years so I was in the habit of grabbing that one more this one I think I'm going to pass along to a friend okay we've just got a couple left we've got this t-shirt from a friend's band but I'll be honest I messed up cutting it and because of that I never wear it it just doesn't fit me right and I would wear it if I hadn't messed up cutting it but I did and I'm not gonna wear it again so I'm gonna put that in a keepsake box and the last item is this Led Zeppelin t-shirt. Uh, this is a t-shirt from, I don't know, the 70s, uh, but it's just been destroyed from being worn and it's not worth keeping. I might try to sell it. Uh, there are people who buy really damaged shirts like this because they love the look. So I think I'm going to try to sell that and if I don't get any takers, then it'll just get uh, hopefully put into fabric recycling, thrown away. Okay, so now we're coming to categories of clothes that I had to think a lot about, about why I don't wear them. Because in theory, I should be wearing them, I like them, I kind of remember that I own them, but I don't. I guess the first things that I like to think about are the colors. The colors don't match what I have in my wardrobe. And one of the main items that pops into my head when I think about that Is this purse so this is a Betsy Johnson purse I've never worn it I took the tags off and then that's it I it still has the original like stuffing in it um, I don't have any mint in my wardrobe I could see myself getting mint in my wardrobe in the future but I don't need to have a mint purse in order to wear some mint clothes and I'm not gonna keep this around just in case someday I get mint in my wardrobe the next two items are shoes and they both have this exact same story going on. And that is that they're brown shoes and I just don't wear a lot of brown. And the few occasions when I do, I wear a different pair of brown shoes. 
These are the two pairs of brown shoes in question. Uh, they're both wooden soled. They're both uh, leather strappy shoes. They're slightly different shades of brown and that's how I've justified having them for so long. Um, these I got a couple years ago and I've only worn once. These I've had for like, I don't know, 15 years or something. And I love them. I've fixed them and repaired them, but I just don't wear them that much. The whole time I've owned them, I haven't worn them that much. And that's because the few occasions where I think a brown shoe would match, I wear this one. And But this is also versatile enough that it has, uh, with the black in it, that I also sometimes wear it with like black based outfits. Now, I think I'm going to keep both of these pairs of shoes, but they're definitely on probation. Um, that's because the type of clothing that I want to be adding to my wardrobe, if you think back to when I was talking about my fashion inspirations, that middle category, that like kind of Biba, um, early 70s Biba style, these would both fit really well in that category. And I really love them and I want to add more brown to my wardrobe. That's something where I'm like seriously lacking. I just have black and that's it. And I really do want to add more brown. I want to get some more brown purses and I do want to get a pair of like brown boots. And just um, as I buy more pants that aren't black skinny jeans, I really think that these will um, help me out because with a pair of wide leg pants, a lot of times you need to be wearing heels and I don't like uh, like skinny heels and most of my boots with heels are meant for skinny jeans. There's just like not quite right with wide leg pants. So I think that I think that I'll be getting more aware of these. But these are on probation and I'll maybe if I don't wear them by the end of the year, they'll be out. We'll see. The last two items are once again purses and the first one is this fawn purse. Um, I like it a lot but as I said I don't wear a lot of clothes that work with uh, brown but I want to get a lot more pants that are colored but that are not like my bright pink disco pants pants that I want to wear on the more in the central part of the central kind of combined wardrobe section where I'm like Biba girl and also like the extreme of um, like androgynous like glam rock suits and I think that this could work with um, both of those kind of styles in my wardrobe and uh, same for this this is uh, my navy uniform purse they don't make these anymore. I think now they just authorize uh, women to wear um, just like any white purse that doesn't have big logos on it. But back in the day, they would issue us these. And this is my white uniform purse I got, I was issued when I was 17. So I love it. I love the retro kind of 60s shape because that's when it was designed. Um, and I want to wear this more and I've always wanted white shoes. I've had my eye on like white boots for like two years and that's probably something I'm going to buy this year. And I'm not always a purse match your shoes kind of girl. I just, and I, this also kind of falls into the category that I'll be getting into later of I forget that I own it. I kind of forget about this. So I really love this and I want, I want to be able to wear this. So this is, this is going to be um, definitely on my list of things to put in the front of my closet so I remember them. Okay, this next category is really the, um, the hardest, the clothes that were the hardest and I really had to think about the most. And I've decided to refer to these clothes as clothes that I only know how to wear one way. And that's very interesting. Because if you only know how to wear something one way, and then there's a reason you can't wear it that one way, then it's, you just never wear it. And the first item is this rainbow tank top. Now, the problem with this is that you would, I love the idea of this. I love um, the idea of like a cutesy like rainbow tank top and kind of ideally this would be something that I wore with my like more like um, Alabama Whirly Peg Bundy kind of like cutesy feminine styles but it's got this black edging and generally when I wear those styles I'm staying I tend to stay away from black I do have black disco pants but I sort of tend to save those for like punk outfits I tend to wear them with like ripped up punk shirts and then just like studded belts on my hips and stuff um, but I so I never reach for it I would like to. It's on probation for the summer. And if I don't wear it by the end of this summer, I'm going to be getting rid of it, but for now it stays. The next item is this rose embroidered bolero. I only have one dress that this really works with. 
Well, I, I guess I have two dresses this works with. One is my all black dress, but generally I wear that to funerals and I don't really ever feel like wearing something embroidered to a funeral. And then I wear this with my leopard print dress. I love my leopard print dress. Uh, it's, like I said before, I've got like a, a range of sizes in my closet and it tends to be at the bigger range and I do appreciate having something to wear over it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang this up on the leopard dress in my closet. It's the only time I ever wear it. It doesn't need to be taking up space in my cardigan drawer and making me not see other things that are in there. So it's gonna be moved. The next item I talked a little bit about in my declutter video, and that is this crazy, um, maybe like cheetah or leopard print sweater with the blue stripe. Now I only wear this with a pair of blue pants. The pants shrunk in the wash and I don't wear them anymore. In fact, I put them into the clutter pile because I hate them along with their matching red uh, pants that I bought at the same time. But this is, no, there's no reason I couldn't wear this with black jeans, but I just, because I don't wear those blue pants, I never wore this. I've tried wearing them with the blue disco pants, and the blue disco pants are something that is something I've thought a lot about, and that's going to be gone into more in the um, video where I talk about clothes that I don't like but I wear, and it's interesting because the disco pants in style are from the feminine, like really feminine side of my wardrobe, but in color, they're from like the tougher uh, side of my wardrobe that tends to be like more menswear based or more um, like t-shirts and jeans and just, you know, less, less girly clothes. And so that's re very interesting. So uh, when I wear these with those pants, those pants then, because they're really tight, those blue disco pants, they end up reminding me of just like those super tight skinny jeans from 10 years ago, and I hate that. And then I, I, so then I've associated this with like those, that kind of look that I don't like, but there's no reason I can't wear this with black jeans or black pants or just any other pair of pants uh, to work. So um, I'm going to resolve to wear this with regular pants and remember that I don't have to just wear it with blue pants. I, I don't know why I thought I could only wear them with blue pants or some, some short circuit in my mind. The next three items all go together because I only ever wear them together and I don't like that. So I've got these um, leather pants Alexander McHugh pants and I've got two sweaters. I've got my wool Harry Potter uh, Ravenclaw Quidditch sweater and I've got this um, black and red sweater that I got from Material World second hand and I like both of these sweaters and I like these pants but the problem is is the pants are really low cut they're really low rise and I don't really do low rise and these sweaters are really long and they're long enough and tight enough that they don't look good pulled down over jeans they look lumpy so I only ever wear them when I wear these pants uh, if you check out my Instagram I did wear them this winter I wore especially this I wore multiple times this winter and I felt cool when I wore it but I didn't feel comfortable I was constantly pulling up the pants if you have wide hips, low rise pants just don't work on you. And then these, I wear this and these are, this is really long. This goes down, it, the back is like uh, longer than the front, but all of these, I just don't feel my best while wearing. And I think I'm going to sell them. So these are out of here. The last item is uh, my jean dress. And this is interesting. So I love this dress. I actually got this from Stitch Fix, but I've seen a lot of dresses in this style by different brands. It snaps up the front, and for some reason, the only way I ever wear it is with this striped shirt that I'm wearing right now under it. Uh, there's no reason for that except for, I mean, I guess I don't really know how else to wear it. I wear this striped shirt a lot with other things, but I never wear this without the striped shirt. And so if I've worn the striped shirt recently, I won't wear the dress, which means this dress only gets worn every few months. So it gets worn like a couple times a year and that's it. But last year I was, okay, the battery died. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but the lighting has changed. It's gotten darker outside. And while I was waiting for the battery to charge, 
I tried cutting the bottom of that uh, bodysuit and it worked, totally worked. I love it. Okay, so where was I? We were talking about the jean dress. Um, last year, when I was heavier, I was having problems finding clothes that fit, and I, but I had some dresses that fit me, and I realized that by putting a sweater over the dress, I could kind of make it into a new item, and so um, I think that I'm going to try to do that. There is, in the next category of things, there's that Betsy Johnson sweater that I love but I never wear, and I realized it would look so cool on top of this. Also, I am going to try it on with all of my tops and see if it looks good with any of those. Uh, I could wear it without a top, but I'm going to be kind of honest. I'm not someone who likes to wear a lot of spaghetti strap things. A lot of I like to have kind of this area. I've talked before about how I like to kind of be a little bit covered up, and I definitely always like to have like my upper arms covered for some reason. Uh, that kind of does have a bearing on that rainbow tank top, and so. Like, I'm guessing that that's probably going to end up being something I get rid of by the end of the summer, but we'll see. I'm giving it one last chance. And this, I'm going to try to put this um, in the front of my closet so that I remember that I have it and also uh, try it out with new things to wear it with. This next category is things that I forget that I own. Um, and it's about 10 items, and I'm just going to kind of go through them as a group. And part of the reason is I think that they've... my closet and my dresser has been so over full that they just got like lost amongst there. So I'm going to, now that I've cleaned everything out, I'm going to be putting them, you know, in the front where they're more visible and hopefully I'll be wearing them with the exception of this. I realized that I forget that I own it, but I kind of just don't like wearing it because of the fit and the cut. Uh, and then also when I was thinking like, oh, okay, maybe I'll sell it. I realized that somehow there's like some very small paint splatters on it, which sucks because this is uh, silk. So um, I might be cutting it up to use the fabric for something. Maybe I'll put this in my like craft drawer, but it's definitely leaving my wardrobe. The other items, uh, I'll just go through them real quick. I've got this ruffly tank top. I've got this off the shoulder polka dot top, po polka dot top that I loved the summer of 2019 and the summer of 2020 I kind of forgot about partly because we didn't go anywhere there weren't like fun barbecues and stuff but uh yep I've got this romper that I literally forget that I own because it's in the back of the closet good for hot weather I've got my Harry Potter cardigan which I love menswear cardigans so I'm gonna have to try to remember hopefully now that I've cleaned out a lot of the sweaters this will get some wear and this Mark by Mark Jacobs tote, which I keep on my purses, but I don't use totes for purses. So I'm actually going to put this in with my like canvas totes that I take to the, the grocery store and the beach and stuff. And it seems a little bit like, I don't know, like really nice to just put with grocery store totes. I want to get wear out of it. And I think that I'll actually use it if it's with my totes and not with my purses. So that's moving. And then the other items, this fun sparkly top, which I is like so 80s with shoulder pads, this uh, corsety uh, bodysuit that I think would look very cool under a suit, like very Alexander McQueen. And I'm excited for getting it. Like it would look good under this blazer, right? And then this Guns N' Roses top, which is a tour t-shirt from when they came to Seattle um, that I've doctored up that I love. This Betsy Johnson sweater that I mentioned would look really good over that jean dress and just I forget that I own it. I don't know why. It's always been like a back of the drawer type of thing and it's going to be front of the drawer. And then this suede skirt that got lost in my closet that I loved for years and stopped wearing. And two pairs of shoes. We've got these thigh high um, Jeffrey Campbell shoes that I forget about <laughs> crazy gonna because they're at the bottom of the closet because they don't stand up so I keep them in their shoe box and then the shoe box sits at the bottom of the closet I'm going to try to find a way to have them out of the box so that I see them along with all my other shoes and then there's that pair of platformy Jeffrey Campbell shoes uh hold on a sec let me get them Okay, these are the shoes. Now, these were kind of like in four different categories. They're kind of in the category of, I have duplicates. I have a ton of black shoes. And I don't wear these because I have so many pairs of black shoes, I always go for the other pairs. Now, why that is, I think, is because 
I associate these with a different time in my life when I wore like I dressed a little differently. I wore a lot of shorts with uh, ripped tights and then I would wear these chunky shoes at the bottom and I was kind of into that look. But as like a side thing that I haven't talked about yet, for a future video, I'm using clothing rental to try out a different, uh, a lot of different pant styles. These went really well with some wide leg pants and they kind of have that 70s kind of platformy vibe. So I think in the future, as I add new pant styles to my wardrobe, these will get more wear because the black boots that I wear most of the time now really are best with like a skinny jean look. So these I think will get a lot of wear when I move into wider leg pants. So these are going back in the closet as well. Okay, we're almost done. I only have a few pieces of clothing left. Uh, the second to last category is clothes that I'm saving. And these were kind of like fragile clothes that I don't want to wear too much uh, because I, I could see, I can start to see the end of their lifespan and I am saving them. And to be honest, in 2020, I didn't have a lot of opportunities to wear them. But I've decided to keep all four. It's this Iggy Pop shirt, this uh, 1981 King Crimson uh, tour t-shirt that I've cut the neck out of. Um, and the fabric is very thin. And then these two t-shirts that I've doctored, but the doctoring is falling apart. This is a t-shirt from a friend's band and uh, this brewery shirt, Tusker Beer, which is the beer of Vanuatu, which I visited in the Navy. So I'm going to keep these. Uh, these are the type of things that I wear to like punk shows and there haven't been any. So these I think will get worn as 2020 moves or 2021 moves along and hopefully things start to happen again. And then the last category, the last two items are items that are just not good enough quality or um, and I'm going to get rid of them. So that would be uh, this skirt, which was like handmade and I bought at a booth at a punk festival. And it's just just really, really thin quality. And for that reason, it doesn't look good. It shows every bump and lump and I'm never going to wear that. But I might try to pass that along to someone who's cool with that. And then this embroidered cardigan, which I love, but I got for free at a swap meet because it's been shrunk. It used to be bigger and now it's smaller and I like that it's smaller and it fits in a nice tight way but because of that the fabric has a weird stiff quality that just feels weird when I wear it and I think I just kind of shy away from wearing it for that reason so this I'm also going to get rid of. Now I did the totals and I have the numbers right here in front of me so I am getting rid of 16 pieces of clothing. I am keeping and putting back in my closet 22 pieces of clothing. But to be honest, a lot of these I'm going to be kind of keeping my eye on. And if eight months from now, if even after I've added more pieces to my wardrobe, these are still not things that I wear or I find that they're not uh, cohesive with the things that I want to be wearing, then I'm going to be getting rid of them. Eight things are moving either to the back of the closet because they don't fit or putting them in a different place. And then five items are getting like stored for posterity. So that's really interesting. I'm basically getting rid of or removing half of these items from my daily wear wardrobe. And then um, the rest are finding various homes. But this, this, is, this is awesome. I did not want to be putting all of these things back in. I mentioned in the last video that now that I'm basically only having my category one clothes, clothes that I like and I wear all the time, now that I only have those in my closet, it's like so nice and clean and spacious. And I wasn't looking forward to putting everything back in, but I knew there was some stuff that I, I kind of wanted to keep. So this is a great ratio to me. So uh, yeah, and next video next week will be going through the clothes that I wear, but I really don't like. And I'm excited about that. I think that's going to add a lot of clothes to my like list of things to wear. And I learned a lot today. I think my takeaways are that if an item doesn't fit, I need to either make a decision um, to fix it or get rid of it. And I think I've also learned that color is important. These are all good lessons that I'm learning and I'm clearing out my wardrobe, making room for things that I will love and wear. Thanks for watching my video guys and thank you all so much for your comments and support. I'm so happy that there's anybody that wants to watch this. I know that like 30 views or whatever that I'm getting doesn't seem like much when popular YouTubers have hundreds of thousands of views but to me the fact that 30 people watched my video makes me feel really happy and 
excited because this is a really fun project for me. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you'll watch next week.